What did he do? He did the mash. He did the monster mash. Don't go away. That's right, he did the monster mash. You know, what happened was he was kind of working late in his lab one night, and then he, he, his eyes beheld this eerie sight, and a monster on a slab began to rise. It was crazy, I'm telling you. And it got me to thinking that, uh, well, you know, my doppelganger, Paul Bechtel, uh, he, he reached out to me and said, let's do a Halloween thing. And I said, oh, yeah, okay, why not? It sounds like fun. So, uh, yeah, I took him up on it. And we're going to try to see if we can invoke some of those feelings that he felt when that monster started to rise. So let's get right to it. So this uh, dairy delivery was sent to me by my doppelganger, Paul, uh, who wanted to just uh, do a, a Halloween build-off with me. Now, I have to say, he sent me a pretty great casting because Catwoman is looking pretty hot on the roof of this thing. It's uh, sad that I'm... Oh, maybe it's not sad. I'm going to have to put this into the stripper. So... Who knows what that could lead to? Okay. We'll see. Anyhow, first things first, let's go ahead and get this taken apart. We're doing a uh, Halloween build-off uh, between Paul and Paul. It should be a lot of fun, and I do have something special in mind. I hope you end up liking it. Okay, this model only has the one post at the front and then tabs at the back. And so once we got it drilled out, we're able to pop it open and take off the base. And overall, I kind of like the tires for this, so I don't think I'm going to do anything to the base at all. So I'm just going to put it to the side and hang on to that. Then we've got this uh, chrome interior, which really doesn't matter in the great scheme of things. I do like that chain running down the back. Um, or whatever that is. It looks like a chain to me. Okay, we'll put that aside, and then we'll get the glass out of here. And fortunately, it's not riveted in, but it's still going to make me fight it to get it out. you got to kind of push it equally from the front and back to get it to pop out. So there's the glass. It's perfect, because this was a, essentially a new car. And now we're taking Catwoman in her hot latex suit over to the stripper. I wonder. Let's take a look. Eh, nothing good happening there. That's a shame. Oh well. I guess we're going to have to say goodbye to the very, very hot Catwoman. Into the hot liquid goo she goes. So Catwoman spent about a day and a half in the hot liquid goo and it's time to uh, bust it out and see what we have, make sure all the paint is coming off nice and if so we can then kind of just brush it off and take it to the sink. Oh yeah, it's just slurming off. We're, we're good. So we'll shake off a little of the excess uh, goo and then we can run her to the sink. Goodbye, Catwoman. You have a very nice butt. Well, I guess some more Mattel 
All right, so I ran the dairy delivery under some nice warm water, hit it with the uh, toothbrush, and scrubbed away all the scamots from this thing, and now uh, we can take a look and see what we have to deal with. Okay, it looks like we've got a nice clean casting, you know, do all the normal things, uh, the wire brush, the dental picks, and all of that stuff. But we're not going to need to be really overly cautious with this thing, because my concept is a monster truck. And when I say monster truck, I mean a monster truck, not a monster truck. So, um, I guess I could make a monster truck out of a monster truck, but... I think I'm just going to stick with Monster Truck. So we're going to just kind of smooth everything out, and then we're going to go ahead and take it over and throw a little paint on it. Okay, so I'm going to need some decals from my friends over at Indycal, and so I'm going to design them on Illustrator uh, to to meet my vision. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just take a piece of paper and kind of uh, rub it down as hard and as well as I can over the body. Now the trick is to make sure that it doesn't move around on you, but you want to really, really be aggressive and uh, on any lines, you know, edges, seams, body lines, anything like that, you really want to be able to make those stand out because you are going to need to see them when you're done, okay? You're going to have to be able to see them with your eyeballs. So you got to really push this down and, and get it set in there. <coughs> so now I can take a pen and just highlight all of those, those body lines and everything like that uh, before scanning this into my computer where I'll use Adobe Illustrator to... Uh, to design out the uh, decals. Getting the, uh, the body lines and everything of your vehicle this way, it actually works pretty well, but I would back that up with a ruler just to make sure that you're getting the right widths of things and lengths of things, um, just to, to double check your work and make sure that your decals are going to fit right. Uh, once I get this uh, ready, I'll scan it, take it into Illustrator, and then uh, once I have the artwork ready, I'll send it to my friend at Indiecals, and I'll very shortly have a beautiful set of decals. Okay, so while I wait for uh, the decals to get here, I can go ahead and turn to paint. And I start out with a little, to me, a fine primer. And now I'm just using some Vallejo Olive Drab Green. Um, it's going to come out flat. Um, and, and that's going to be a problem for me later on that I'm going to have to fix. Um, uh, and, and it has to do with the decals. You can't really decal well over a flat paint. You're going to get silvering every time. Um, now, I knew that going in, and I had a plan for it, but it didn't quite work out as well as I'd like it to, um, so it's something I'm going to have to deal with. So the nice thing about painting this in a, uh, a flat OD green is I don't really have to worry about a big, beautiful, glossy wet coat at the end there. Uh, just lay the paint down and let it dry. So uh, that's what we're going to do. And we'll set this aside, and once it's all nice and dry, we'll come back to it. Okay, so now with everything dry, um, as I said, you can't decal over a flat paint. Um, it's going to come out terrible. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and coat the entire thing with some uh, uh, Pledge Floor Care. And that's going to give it a nice glossy finish that will take the decals very nicely. And it's also a good product in that it's, uh, it's very compatible. So when, I, when I'm done, I'm going to be able to put a flat coat over this and bring the whole thing back to flat without a lot of impact. But uh, So we'll go ahead and hit it with the Pledge Floor Care, get a nice glossy finish to it, and then once that's dry, we can turn to the decals. Okay, so the pledge is um, dry. The decals got here. We've gone ahead and laid them down. Uh, you've seen me do that a thousand times. You don't need to see it again. And basically, I've got my little Abbey Normals uh, brain repository decals and then my big line of stitches. Um, I thought that looked really, really nice. And so we're going to go ahead and let those dry. Um... And then once everything is nice and dry and there's no moisture left underneath the decals, then we can go ahead and spray the whole thing down with a little bit of a flat coat. And that'll give us that flat finish back that we really want on this model. Okay, so here we are back at the paint booth. Everything's nice and dry, and uh, we've got our flat coat ready and loaded, and we can go ahead and start putting that down and sealing this whole sucker up. So just like the flat paint, uh, we don't really need to worry about a nice wet gloss coat at the end here. We're gonna just put this down in a tack coat and then a couple of uh, medium coats until we've got the whole thing kind of sealed up and it's got a, that nice uh, flat finish when it dries and it'll uh, hide the decals into the, to the finish and it will seal it and it'll give it that flat monster look that we're looking for. Okay, our monster truck is dry, and uh, as I said, I'm not going to really do anything to change the base because I kind of dig the way it looks. Um, so we can really actually put this thing back together, and then we'll put our uh, finishing touches on it after it's all locked <coughs> back up. So uh, I've got my little uh, button head screws and my, uh, my little uh, wrench, and I've got the parts. And we can go ahead and start by putting the glass in, not the interior, you dummy. So now I'm going to have to take that back out, because I'm stupid that way. All right, putting the glass in first. All right, now we can put the interior back in. And like I said on this base, it's got a couple little tabs that go into the back. And so we just kind of pop them in and drop it down and it's right by the post and we just put the screw in and we're in business. So I knew my monster truck was missing something and I couldn't put my finger on it and then I realized where are his bolts? He doesn't have any bolts. So I turned to uh, Tinkercad uh, online and I designed a couple of uh, bolts in several different sizes 
and I printed them out on my resin printer, cured them, picked out the right size, and I'm going to glue them onto the doors here uh, as the door handles. So uh, I thought that was the ultimate touch for my monster truck, that is. So, in the end, I really love this thing. Uh, I know it, it's not extensive and, and, and as big as some of my other projects, but I don't really believe that every project needs to be this monumental effort. Um, I had a vision of what I wanted to do here, and I did it, and it, I think it came out great, and I hope you're going to agree with me. So here it is, Abby Normal's Brain Repository Delivery Vehicle. All right, well, there you have it, the monster truck. Yeah, it's uh, my little homage to one of my all-time favorite movies, Young Frankenstein. I love that flick. I've watched it probably, you know, a couple hundred times, and hopefully before I die, I'll watch it a couple hundred more. Uh, it's just the funnest, enjoyable movie, especially because I grew up in the era of of those kind of monster flicks. Um, I, you know, I don't know how many Midwesterners there are or how far this show uh, went out, but we grew up with a thing called Creature Features. And, man, we would love that show. It was so fun. And, you know, that's kind of what Young Frankenstein invokes, and that's what I tried to put in to my monster truck. Well, I hope you liked it. Be sure to check out Paul's video. I'm going to put a link down below for that and see what you think of what he pulls off. All right, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe, click the little bell. You'll be notified anytime I release a new video. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Uh, I really do love to talk with you guys, so I, I always enjoy that. Um, also, just a quick reminder... The live stream is coming up on the 3rd, Sunday the 3rd, okay? Don't miss it. 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. And that clock's changed that night before that, so don't be late, all right? Okay, this is Paul from Fat Guy Productions wishing you a scary, creepy, kind of monster mash type of day. And until next time, be good.